It's Tuesday, October 15th. I'm Paul Joseph Watson. This is InfoWars Nightly News. Tonight, the U.S. Senate says the right to keep and bear arms. The Second Amendment is now debatable. The EBT card shutdown showcases the dangers of dependency on the government. Then, is the Obamacare website crashing to keep the true cost of socialized health care hidden? And is MSNBC editing footage of the veterans protesting in D.C. to distort their motives? All this and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Top story tonight, U.S. Senate says right to keep and bear arms is debatable. According to the U.S. Senate, the right of the American people to keep and bear arms is debatable. Despite two separate Supreme Court decisions which confirmed that the Second Amendment protected the right of an individual to own guns, the Senate.gov website contains an explanation that suggests otherwise. In a bizarre clarification of the Second Amendment, the Senate website reads, quote, whether this provision protects the individual's right to own firearms or whether it deals only with the collective right of the people to arm and maintain a militia has long been debated. That's the quote. So the very body concerned with upholding and protecting Americans' rights under the mandate of the Constitution, the U.S. Senate, refuses to fully acknowledge the fundamental right to keep and bear arms under the Second Amendment. And that's merely scratching the surface. This so-called guide to the Constitution reads like a signing statement for the Bill of Rights. You recall those signing statements under Bush where he would just interpret a law any way he wanted. Well, the Senate has now done the same basically for the entire Constitution. This article only covers the Second Amendment angle. We're going to have more on the other sections which the Senate feels it needs to reinterpret and those reports will be coming out soon. EBT card users threaten Rodney King-style riots. While some people reacted to the failure of the electronic benefit trading cards system on Saturday by looting Walmart stores, others raised the prospect of more widespread riots if the system goes down for a sustained period of time. They better resolve something because if it stays like this, there's going to be an uproar in the city of LA. Like what? A Rodney King, baby. All again, right? Yep. That was the reaction of one Skid Row resident, while numerous others took to Twitter to express similar sentiments. Considering that Walmarts were being looted just hours after this EBT downtime, imagine what a five-day delay in food stamps would cause. That's the potential fallout from a U.S. debt default, which could occur by the end of this week. Moving on, hidden messages in new $100 bill. A video blogger claims there are hidden messages in the new $100 bill which warn of future nuclear devastation in the United States. Remember, of course, the $20 bill, which if you folded it over, appeared to show the attacks on the Pentagon and the World Trade Center that was issued in 1998, three years before the 9-11 attacks. Well, now, according to Jonathan Kleck, the new $100 bill contains images of nuclear devastation and day after tomorrow style flooding of New York City. So while some are going to read all kinds of symbolism into this, I see it more speaking to the human appetite for apocalyptic fervor and kind of prophecy pornography. It's in that vein. It's debatable. You have to use leaps of imagination and logic to see it. But there's no doubt that people are interested in this. I mean, the one video from Kleck has got something like 150,000 views. So people are fascinated by the supposed symbolism in the $100 bill. The full clip is on the Prison Planet Live YouTube channel, so make your own mind up. Steve Watson reports on Infowars.com, Obama operatives' anti-Tea Party protest draws dismal numbers. An anti-Tea Party protest today at the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., organized by paid Obama operatives, drew numbers so small that many couldn't even find the protest they were supposed to be taking part in. The economic action event, billed as an anti-Tea Party shutdown protest, was put together by Organizing for Action, the Social Welfare Obama Support Group. 
So we saw with the Million Vet March this past weekend, thousands of protesters descend on Washington, D.C., carry off the barricades, as they're known, from the war memorial, the World War II memorial, dump them outside the White House. Of course, then we saw the riot cops sent in examples of police brutality, which Rachel Maddow and MSNBC later edited deceptively to hide. And basically that protest, even though it was uh, epic in terms of some of the images that were coming out there, drew basically no media attention whatsoever. Well, this Obama protest is not going to draw any media attention either because basically nobody showed up. Moving on now. Girls threatened with hate crime charges for complaining about transgender bathroom harassment. Does the right of people who identify as transgender to sexually harass girls in public bathrooms trump the privacy rights of the girls being subjected to that harassment? Yes, according to a Colorado school. Female students at Florence High School were threatened with hate crimes charges when they complained about being harassed by a transgender boy in the girl's bathroom. The school ardently sided with the transgender student and suggested that the girls stop using most of the female restrooms if they had a problem with it. After both parents and female high school students complained, the students were told they could be kicked off the athletic team and even hit with hate crimes charges if they didn't stay silent about the issue. And again, this is another example of how political correctness in the name of protecting the rights of a minority, in this case, the supposed right of a transgender student to harass girls in public bathrooms, serves only to violate the rights of the vast majority. Finally, now, this is out of Forbes. Obamacare's website is crashing because it doesn't want you to know how costly its plans are. A growing consensus of IT experts outside and inside the government have figured out a principal reason why the website for Obamacare's federally sponsored insurance exchange is crashing. Healthcare.gov forces you to create an account and enter detailed personal information before you can start shopping. This in turn creates a massive traffic bottleneck as the government verifies your information and decides whether or not you're eligible for subsidies. So why did they do this? even with the knowledge that it would crash the entire system, which, as we know, is exactly what happened. Because they didn't want people to realize how expensive the new system really is. And the quotes out of the Forbes article attest to that. Which, when you crunch the numbers, according to a study by the Manhattan Institute, equates to an average 99% more expensive for men and 62% more expensive for women under Obamacare. So to avoid scaring off the middle class who are going to be paying for all this, it actually appears as though the healthcare.gov train wreck was planned all along. And that rather than creating or risking the creation of an instant backlash, the government planned to boil Americans in the pot slowly by deliberately engineering the slowdowns themselves, enabling the true horror of the added expenses under the new Obamacare system to be revealed more gradually. That's it for this portion of the news, but don't go away because after the break, Gigi Anetta presents Tyranny Watch, a special report on the latest examples of police brutality and TSA abuse. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. 
The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salads, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Welcome back to InfoWars Nightly News. And I'd like to remind you, of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, that you can see it first and in high quality at prisonplanet.tv, which is our subscription website. And you don't just get access to the nightly news first as it goes out. Of course, you also get video streaming of The Alex Jones Show, a ton of other multimedia content, speeches, special events, behind-the-scenes footage. And it all goes to support our network it allows us to continue doing what we do and reach more people. It's the same low price it always has been, so please subscribe at prisonplanet.tv. Coming up now, Gigi Anetta presents her special Tyranny Watch report, which this week focuses on police brutality and TSA abuse. I'm Gigi Anetta. Welcome to Tyranny Watch. So what happened to the freedom to worship? Catholics across the United States are a target for the militant government. They cannot worship at military bases, and priests who offer to do the masses even for free are being told that they may be arrested for it. Clearly, the people in Washington, D.C. need to examine their hearts. The deceit reaches over oceans, as Kerry is in Malaysia, and he praises Malaysia for their multi-faith model in the Muslim country that bans Bibles. It's good to know that Secretary of State John Kerry's ideal multi-faith model is a country that seized 20,000 Christian Bibles, banned Ahmadis from praying, and destroys a Hindu temple every three weeks. Let's hope his boss doesn't intend to introduce this multi-faith model in the United States. One of the worst problems is forced conversions to Islam, which has become particularly acute since 2001. Despite the provision for freedom of religion entrenched in Article 11 in the Malaysian Constitution, now even the non-recognized Muslim sects are in trouble. The Selangor Council of Islamic Religion in Malaysia has issued a notice ordering the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community Malaysia to immediately stop offering prayer services at the National AMC headquarters. The waters are definitely muddy when it comes to multi-faith in this administration. This weekend they had their hands full as people stood up all over Washington. Thank you for being here today because we, the people, are determined to show the United States military our esteemed vets that the size of the heart of America for our vets is immeasurable. We are here to honor our vets. You look around, though, and you see these barricades, and you have to ask yourself, is this any way that a commander-in-chief would show his respect, his gratitude to our military. This belongs to you. This does not belong to the government. It belongs to the people. Don't do it. 
there always has to be a bully cop or a bully government official. And in New York, a criminal defense attorney reveals that in the Bronx, they actually lied to meet quotas. Narcotic police lied to reach arrest quotas in the Bronx. It'll be interesting to hear details in upcoming weeks about how they threw innocent people in the slammer just to satisfy their job requirements. The TSA absolutely humiliates an 82-year-old woman at Sky Harbor Airport. This revelation is in a recent report only available because of the Freedom of Information Act. An 82-year-old woman in a wheelchair in the screening line at Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport goes all the way through until the metal detector beeps over her chest. The woman tells TSA that she has a breast prosthesis because she had a mastectomy. The TSA agents take the woman to a room and order her to take off her blouse, then her bra, and then her prosthesis, which they examine. The elderly woman strips to her waist with nothing to hide her scars. Welcome to the USA. Stop the tyranny. Sign up for PrisonPlanet.tv today and give your username and password to up to 10 people. And don't lose hope. Remember Psalm 118.8 says that it's better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust humans. I'm Gigi Arnetta with Tyranny Watch for the InfoWars Nightly News. Stay tuned because coming up, David Knight talks to Joel Gilbert about the political scandal surrounding New Jersey Senate candidate Cory Booker. That's coming up next on InfoWars Nightly News. Alex Jones here to warn you about some of the most important health information you may ever hear. I'm talking about radiation, radioactive fallout, radioactive particles contaminating the Northern Hemisphere. Conservatively, since the 1940s, the Northern Hemisphere of our planet has more than doubled its background radiation. In fact, that was before Fukushima exploded. Now the levels are going up and up and up. Fish are contaminated in the Pacific, and the FDA, the EPA, and others, they're not worried about it. They've been raising the levels of what they claim is safe radioactive particles. So after more than two years of research into how to protect my family, looking at all the literature, talking to the experts, across the board they agreed, iodine is key, but of the family of iodine, nascent, natural, non-GMO, non-factory iodine that comes from the earth is absolutely paramount for your thyroid and other functions in the body. The literature, the research, it's there. It's not my opinion. It is admitted that iodine is essential for the health of our bodies overall and nascent iodine is the best form. Now, we're announcing the launch of InfoWarsLife.com, and we're going to bring you scores of products over the next few years that we're researching and developing. But nascent iodine is the first product we're coming out with because it's so important, and it's also listed as a fluoride detoxer. It does so many other things. Your body needs it, and when you don't have enough iodine, forget the radiation, your thyroid absorbs the sodium fluoride and other things. Nascent iodine and InfoWars Life Survival Shield in double strength at half the cost of the leading competitors. Please visit InfoWarsLife.com today. Well, tomorrow, Wednesday, October the 16th, there's a special election to replace deceased Senator Frank Lautenberg, who died in office earlier this year. Now, one of the candidates there, Cory Booker, is the mayor of Newark, New Jersey. And although he was in the city council for four years and seven years as Newark mayor, we just learned from Joel Gilbert and Charles Johnson that a lot of people have a question as to whether or not he even lives in Newark. Welcome, Joel Gilbert. Uh, tell us about this viral story. Uh, what made you think that he didn't live in Newark? Well, we had multiple reports. Uh, Charles Johnson, who's an independent investigative journalist here in Los Angeles, and I had been monitoring the uh, election uh, with between Cory Booker and Steve Lonigan, and we'd had multiple emails and reports from residents of Newark that Cory Booker was never there. He was never in town. And what first piqued our interest is 
the repeated claims by Cory Booker that he was a type of Batman figure. Hmm. He would he would show up at the scene of police events, high profile events, and claim to arrest people, save people from burning buildings. Really? And, yeah, and uh, claim to be rescuing people on the streets. And then we noticed that his campaign slogan was, quote, Cory Booker does not run away from problems. He runs towards problems. Mm. So it, it seemed obvious that he was trying to create this narrative. Maybe he's a New York firefighter. <laughs> well, uh, I don't think so. I think he's trying to, uh, we, we thought that he was trying to prop himself up by overcompensating, mm -hmm. that he's always the man on the spot, he's always there. So we decided to go to Newark and talk to people and investigate the truth. How can this be that this particular mayor saves dogs from freezing on the porch? He claims to have rescued a woman from a burning building, uh, and on and on. So mm -hmm. as soon as we hit the streets and started speaking to people, uh, we found out two things. They all claim that Booker is never there and that he simply rides around in the car either with the police or with a police scanner and shows up at high profile events and then claims to somehow be involved in, and save the day. Uh, so this is why we went there and we discovered not only that uh, most of these scenes of personal heroism were phony, but that uh, Booker is really never seen in the city and he does not live at the addresses which he purports to live at. Yeah, and he, he filed for Senate, and there are six people that filed for Senate. Now, he used a P.O. box when he filed for Senate. Now, one of the other candidates as well used a P.O. box, but he has two residences that he claims are in Newark, uh, 435 Hawthorne and 19 Longworth. Did you go to both of those, and what did you find? Oh, uh, that's correct. He actually had a third as well, which mm. was a crack house, which, <laughs> which uh, we went to and was boarded up, and we found that he had recently sold for a dollar and owed back taxes. Uh, the wow. other two residences, the uh, 435 Hawthorne, we went to. We spoke to several neighbors, including a woman named uh, Tashe Thomas and uh, James Sharp, and they said, we're here every day. We saw him one time in 2009. He does not live here. He's a liar, quote unquote. Uh, we saw a man in the window and spoke to him. He said his name was Officer Martinez, and I asked him if he was a tenant. He said no, that he's uh, a security there. Uh, so it was pretty clear that uh, Booker was nowhere to be found near that location. Then we went to 19 Longworth. There's a police car in the driveway. A policeman answers. And as shown on the video that I produced in, and put out on uh, YouTube and in the Daily Caller, mm -hmm. The policeman says that Booker doesn't live there. He hasn't seen him. He doesn't know when he'll be there. So in response to this, yesterday, the Booker campaign said that Booker moved from Hawthorne to Longworth two weeks ago, which makes no sense. Number one, why would you plan a move in the middle of a Senate campaign? Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that when we were at Longworth, the policeman there had not seen him or knew when he was around. So I think it's a shell game. He has multiple, mm -hmm. he claims multiple residences and keeps 24 hour security at these multiple residences so that the neighbors won't suspect that he's never there. They just think, well, he must be, you know, at the other house. So many questions arise. Why does he have 24 hour security at two separate locations? Right. Uh, now, one of these did, people that you talked to said that they were a census taker and that when they went to get information at one of those addresses, that they were told that it was a police station. Which address was that? At 435 Hawthorne, one of the uh, census workers, Cassandra Dock, said she went and knocked there and was told by the police that it was a police station. Mm. Now, the officer we spoke to there, Martinez, said that, uh, that Booker it, it did live there. It was his house. But then Booker said the next day that he had moved. So you have to wonder yeah. why was this officer hanging out there 24 hour security if he really had moved. So we find all of uh, Booker's explanations to be disingenuous. And uh, most residents believe that Booker lives in New York City and he's simply using the Newarkans, the residents of Newark, 
to further and launch his political career. Uh, he's typically in Texas or in Hollywood, yeah. raising money, uh, making high profile friends, and is rarely seen in the city. That's right. He has a lot of connections to Hollywood. As a matter of fact, one of the neighbors in that video said we call him Hollywood. His big supporters are in Hollywood, and of course he has very close ties to Obama, who himself has some questionable background issues and a very, very changing story in his, uh, his own personal background. And so we see this again with Cory Booker. That's very disturbing when we don't know anything about these people that are getting elected to very high office. Well, that's a, a, a phenomenon, a very dangerous phenomenon that yeah. I've chronicled in my film, you know, Dreams from My Real Father, Yes. where I showed that Barack Obama's personal and political background are very, very different from what he claimed. He claimed that his father was a goat herder from Kenya, and he was uniquely qualified with this background to bring people together in compromise. Uh, I showed that his real biological father, who became his ideological mentor, was a Communist Party USA propagandist named Frank Marshall Davis, who was also a Soviet agent. Now, mm. Obama admits that he was raised by this guy, but claims that it was just a friend of the grandfather. So we have Cory Booker, almost an Obama clone in mm -hmm. some sense. He, uh, we don't know where he lives. Uh, he claims all these fantastic stories of saving the day and being Batman and rescuing people from burning buildings. But the media refuses to question this narrative. They refuse to question it. Now, Charles Johnson wrote the article, and I did the video on this investigation. And already the next day, you have Slate magazine, Media Matters attacking us. Absolutely. It's gone viral. It's a big issue. Well, we're out of time, Joel Gilbert. Tomorrow is the election, and we'll see. But he certainly does have some connections with Batman, even if it's just his secret identity and his hidden lair, right? <laughs> Thank exactly. you very much. I, I think I found that Cory Booker's uh, potential voters were not motivated. They all hated him and that Lonigan's uh, voters were highly motivated. So yes. I think it's going to be close. I think it'll yes. be close. All right. Be interesting to see. Thank you very much. Interesting report. Thanks Thank for you. having me. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens in that special election tomorrow. But we already have a powerful politician whose background has a lot, a lot of question marks that we're not allowed to investigate. But Joel Gilbert did investigate it, as he mentioned in this interview, Dreams from My Real Father, and that's available at InfoWarsStore.com. It goes into Obama's background, and it is something that you ought to be concerned about when we have people elected to the highest offices in the land and we know nothing about them. That's a very frightening prospect. That's not transparent government like we need to see. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Stay tuned after the news for more special reports. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. doing wrong until you I can find out you can legally have a so so you can just stop anybody in the world for rudely displaying yes oh how am I rudely displaying a gun I'm walking my name is Jonathan Garcia I'm with open carry Texas and I'm out here today to show my support for master sergeant CJ Grisham the master sergeant who was unlawfully arrested and disarmed over in temple his trial starts today how are you feeling about the proceedings so far well, it's all been procedural right now, just picking a jury. Um, again, uh, I, I don't think I have anything to worry about. The, the facts are on my side, and uh, the case is going to unfold that way, and I'm going to walk out of here a free man, and then I can begin to hold the people accountable that put me through all this. They asked the jury who was familiar with the case who had seen the video, <laughs> about half of them stood up. I think it was more than half. I think it was like 80% of the people stood up and said they were familiar with the case. So do you think that's good, bad, and different? Um, you know, it's hard to tell. Uh, th there are a lot of people who are familiar with the case that completely believe that I'm in the wrong. Uh, I call them statists. 
And then there are those that uh, saw that I wasn't doing anything wrong at all. I called them constitutionalists. Saturday, open carry march on uh, in San Antonio, line in the sand. We're going to be from 10 to 1 o'clock. We've got over 1,000 people coming. And uh, it's going to be a great big event. All kinds of groups and organizations coming together to uh, spread the word about open carry. So be there. San Antonio at the Alamo, 10 o'clock this Saturday, October 19th. My name's Dave Matheny. I'm the owner of Silencer Shop. For the people who don't know, what is a silencer or suppressor? A suppressor is just like the muffler on your car. In fact, the, the first car mufflers were actually firearm silencers that had been attached to cars to make them quieter. Now, the technology in car mufflers has moved on, partially because they're, on, they're not so heavily regulated. But essentially, all it is is taking the, um, the expanding gases that create the blast out of the end of the muzzle and allowing to, them to expand in expansion chambers and essentially lessen the sound. The silencers are they're not silent, right? In fact, in a lot in a lot of cases what you're really shooting for is hearing safe. And and I've read a lot like on the, on that Wall Street Journal article there were people would comment you that that's horrible to have a silencer because I want to hear you coming if you're shooting at me. And and that what what they don't realize even in that article it mentioned like on an AR15 with a top of the line suppressor you're quieting the gun down to the level of a jackhammer. Now these are your are your typical AR15 suppressors 5.56 millimeter on this left hand side or your right hand side of the case. Um, these are all going to be quick attach so they'll just quick attach onto an AR15. Do you think all this new regulation is necessary? Oh, not at all. I would basically, what you're talking about, with, with suppressors in general, it probably is the most highly regulated item in the firearms market already. And when you consider that it's really nothing more than a safety device, it, it's the regulation that's already there could be considered to be kind of ridiculous. This is a 338 Lapua. It's a Desert Tactical. This gun is so loud without a silencer that it literally goes off the top of the top level of our sound meter which maxes out around 175 180 decibels with that suppressor it's hearing safe and quieter than a 22. Suppressor. quieter than a 22. quieter than a 22 by a lot explain to us the difference between having a class 3 license or the trust that you do well a class 3 license is a license to sell silencers. So, for example, we would have a class three license, we sell a lot of silencers. When you purchase a suppressor, there are three ways to register it. Um, the, the most restrictive way to register is as an individual. Because if you register as an individual, it really is tied to you as a person. So let's say you buy one as an individual, your wife uses it on a home defense gun when you're not home, that's a felony. So what a lot of people do in order to deal with situations like that is to use a trust. So you set up a trust, really simple thing to set up, you add your family members to it, and then anybody who's listed in the trust as a trustee can have independent possession. What they're talking about, they're talking about the gun trust loophole. They fill out all the paperwork that goes to the, directly to the ATF and sits there for seven to eight months before it gets approved. Um, I, I don't know if it's just me, but to me that is not what criminals do. <laughs> is the Second Amendment absolute? I believe so, yeah. I think that uh, I think there are good reasons to have that in place. So what would you say to the people, you know, uh, they, they see these shootings and they say, you know, this has got to stop. We see so many shootings and the children and all these things. Well, why would we not want more gun regulations? Everybody agrees these are tragedies, but the uh, even even putting aside that they're blown out of proportion to a lot of extent, increasing the level of gun legislation is going to make no difference to this. You look at the, the recent shooting that just happened, what, last week or the week before, that was done with a pump shotgun. And you know, it's funny because a couple months before that, Joe Biden was standing there saying everybody should own one. As I told my wife, I said, Jill, if there's ever a problem, just walk out on the balcony here or walk out put that double barrel shotgun and fire two blasts outside the house. What they're trying to do really is ban firearms in general. Whatever tragedy happens to happen, they're going to use it for political purposes.